This is a wound. People usually ask, how is your wound doing? Finally someone asked, I'll tell them all about my problems. But since the wound has no mouth, it can't really answer. This is so sad. The life of a wound is actually pretty interesting and has five distinct stages to its life cycle. So let's imagine for a moment how it would be if you were reincarnated as a wound. I'm a what? Your birth as a wound is truly a beautiful process. Imagine a human chopping some onions and then, whoops, he slits open his arm. Or a man going for a walk and some crazy dog bites his leg. In a moment like that, a new fresh wound is born. This is the first stage, the birth. At this point you are open and painful to the human. Blood is coming out and if nothing is done, human will bleed to death. To stop that, you go into your second stage called hemostasis. Blood begins to clot seconds, two minutes after you, the wound, get formed. How it happens is thrombocytes, that are small parts of blood, give a signal to clotting factors. Clotting factors are proteins in blood that together with thrombocytes then form a blood clot. As this is happening, another process called vasoconstriction goes on. Blood vessels around you start to shrink to reduce the blood flow. After this process is done, the wound is closed. And as the time goes on, this clot will get thicker, stronger and will gain a new name. People will call it a scab. As an open wound, it was easy for you to get infected. There are a lot of angry bacteria, debris and sometimes even harmful viruses out in the dangerous world. You know you need to protect yourself. Some of these sneaky bad guys might have snuck in while you were busy forming blood clots. So you go into your third stage, called inflammation. At this time you release a small army of different white blood cells. They fight the battle for you by ingesting and destroying any unwelcome intruders. While this process is important and necessary, it hopefully won't last too long. These warriors are known to get too carried away with their battles sometimes. And as long as the inflammation battlefield is active, it might hinder builders to rebuild the tissue. For a not too serious wound, the inflammation battle usually ends after a couple of days. Once the battlefield has cleared, you can start rebuilding. Now oxygen-rich red blood cells come to aid in creating new tissue. Blood is like a train that carries many needed nutrients, cells and antibodies to the wound. And you, as a wound, can then use these resources that blood has provided. During this fourth rebuilding stage, a type of cell called fibroblast contributes by secreting collagen proteins. Collagen is used to form connective tissue. It is one of the main building blocks. During this time there will be angiogenesis going on, or in other words, the formation of new blood vessels. This will help in expanding the blood train network, so more supplies can be delivered to continue the tissue rebuilding process. Additionally, epithelial cells start working during this time to eventually get rid of the clotted blood and replace it with skin. When this process is done, the scab will fall off and you, the wound, will be fully covered by new skin. Now the fifth and final stage called remodeling starts. In this stage you, as a wound, will still be around for months, if not years, to accompany your host. During this extended time, the human will see how the wound slowly changes color from pink and stretchy to slowly fading away. Human might also feel itching or tightness in that area. These are all signs that you, the wound, continue to rebuild yourself. Your main goal is to come as close as possible to the tissue that was there before the injury. 